Um, sir? Sir? Sir, you're in the you're in the way. Don't you dare show them that. That's inappropriate. Catfish policies are one of those weird things where in car shows, they get a lot of hate. In Facebook, they should be an existing thing. And on dating profiles, it would probably be helpful because it's the equivalent of the difference between a profile picture and a tagged picture. And I just got back from Slime Enough Gatlinburg where I had a fantastic time. I had an absolute blast. The only thing that I missed were my cats. You really are killing me here, buddy. It was a great time with the homies, got to chill up and down the mountainside, got to meet a bunch of people, launch Martini Works, it was all fantastic. So when I got home, I was expecting there to be a ton of love on the internet, a ton of support and camaraderie, okay? And it, there was, except when I went on TikTok, it took about two days for me to realize that there were people out here complaining about the show. One of the things that they were complaining about was inevitably this catfish policy. And it is a big deal right now, according to everyone on the internet. And of course, TikTok is the cesspool of comments, so I thought I would just give my thoughts as to what happened been at Slime Enough Gatlinburg 2022 and some things that might help you understand the situation more for or against depending on where you're at in life because guess what baby boy you're not the same person you were six months ago and sometimes people change maybe you got a better build now and you side with one side over the other and I'm Alex Alex I'm Martini with two underscores and today we're talking about cars so Slime Enough Gatlinburg is a slammed static car show style thing in Tennessee and it's an awesome weekend it's two days long they have two different sets of cars that come in and they have a thing called a catfish policy where if you go to register the vehicle online and then you go to be in person to actually get the car to show and what was registered and what is in front of these human beings are two separate vehicles two different things there's imperfections that weren't clearly stated in the registration the car can be denied now the reason that this is such a big deal is because slime enough gatlinburg has gotten huge it's absolutely massive the amount of people that were there this weekend was astounding and to be honest i'm a little bit scared as to how big this event's going to get before they start getting into more trouble with this city now everyone was super awesome the whole weekend which is great to hear and hopefully it stays that way for a very long while but this whole thing has like springboarded the argument that the catfish policy was just a pain in the ass if not even a real thing because with how big it had gotten there were people that were being denied into the show that had registered because of the catfish policy there's a guy out here that has a g35 on air and he was denied now he states that the registration pics he sent in had the drift stitching thing which is, you know, you, you got the, the broken, like, the bumper thing. And he says that it was actually put in the registration documentation when he applied, but it was denied at the gate for that very same reason. And a lot of people were very upset with Gatlinburg for this. There's another person that got upset that somebody that has the old Stancy Pants RX-8 got accepted, even though everyone there knew that the front fenders were kind of sort of destroyed from him throwing that thing on a trailer, which we did a short for, by the way, if you're interested in checking that out. But yet he got into the show which is a little bit weird, right? Now, I love the guy. He's an awesome dude. When I talked to him, he was very, very realistic, very awesome and humble. I love the guy to death. Doesn't necessarily mean that I gotta love the car, but I just wanna be clear on that. So there's people that were just supporting Slime Enough, stating, well, stop having bacon fenders, stop having creased stuff, stop having broken lips. But then there are other people that were very upset because what was happening was it didn't seem to be consistent. Now, the number one thing with any sort of catfish policy in car shows is that you have to be consistent. No matter what you do, when you start telling people who can and can't come into a show that they paid money for, you have to be very black and white with them. And that was something that I think Slime Enough may not have done as well as they could have. Now that doesn't mean that it's a bad event organization. They host incredible events all over the nation. The Gatlinburg show is probably their pinnacle show in my opinion, and I will go back year and year again because everyone in that team and everyone that's a part of that staff are probably some of the sweetest people I've ever met in my life, and I love hanging out with them. But that doesn't mean that there's some things that could be done better, especially as Gatlinburg gets absolutely massive. And what may have worked last year just isn't working this year because of the volume of people. Catfish policies need to have a black and white process. There needs to be like a 15 step thing that every single person is looking at unanimously as the cars are coming in. And it doesn't matter how many followers you have or how big your social channel is or whether you're a vendor, if it does not meet that 15 step thing, it gets denied. Now, that's where the first issue really came up with the event because that didn't seem consistent to a lot of people that were out there. Now, Gatlinburg could fix it by throwing an event together, or throwing an app together where you, if it doesn't meet it, you press submit, it kicks an email over off to the person that registered the car saying, sorry, you catfished us, here's why. And while it may be harsh, 
it is something that would probably help some of this stuff here. Now remember, you, you have to wrap your head around the fact that car show people, predominantly 18 to 24 year old men, are probably some of the most insecure people in the car community. It's a fact. It's not meant to be a mean thing. It's just truth. Because you got a bunch of dudes that are trying to show off their car and they're trying to get into the, one of the biggest, coolest shows currently in the nation. And when they get denied, they feel like you just stabbed their testicles. Now they feel like you just hurt every fiber of their being. So it's only natural that they're gonna go to social media, but it seems like it's mostly on TikTok versus anything else. Gallenberg on the other side, I don't think should ever get rid of a catfish policy. I personally like them, and I know that even I might eat my own words every once in a while, but catfish policies are really good things for shows where you wanna maintain a high level of quality. And the quality of cars at Gatlinburg was insane this year. It was super incredible. The cars that we were competing with and the cars that were in the show were some of the cleanest that I've ever seen. But you have to be consistent. Now on the other flip side of things, I think it's important for Slime Enough to get a little bit of credit because one of the things that's really hard to do is gauge a car's quality through online registration because you can literally do anything you want on the internet right now with Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere. You can do anything you want. Literally fake anything you could possibly want. So they're only going off of what you provide them. That's it. And the number one culprit or victim of causing these issues, in my personal opinion, has to be wraps. Wraps are this thing that it just, it covers up so many issues, so many imperfections, so many problems. And I know a ton of people wrap their cars because of that very reason that they get denied at the front gate because the things that are underneath that wrap are really easy to be seen. You see things like bacon fenders, you see things like rust, you see things like overtaped wrap lines, you see things that you 100% would not see on a camera because the camera shot was taken from 20 feet away. There's gotta be a way around that. And I also know that there are cars that were wrapped that were very not probably the best executed that might have gotten in because people didn't know what to look for because wraps are a tough thing to actually spot and judge. If you are in the wrap business, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's this thing where there's an unequal playing field or it feels like there's unequal playing field because of these things. And car enthusiasts and people that register their cars, if they're doing it maliciously and they're hiding things, they're hiding imperfections, they're hiding stuff like that, you can't be mad that Slam Enough is gonna deny you because it's only gonna get harder and harder to get into the show as the show gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's only natural. But on the flip side of things, you have to make sure that you know what to look for, especially if you're the front staff at Gatlinburg for Slam Enough or any car show that has a catfish policy. Because if you don't, you're, you're playing with some very like insecure people. You're, you're, you're dealing with people that are very passionate about what they do. And if you do it the wrong way, you are gonna get some backlash on here. Now I'm glad that Simon Up, they're issuing refunds and things like that to anybody that was catfish denied because at first they weren't going to. That was something that they denied outright, which is again, a little bit of a problem once you get to the inconsistency in the application process. But what really drives home this conversation is whether people should feel entitled to being in a show or not. At the end of the day, I am putting my car in their show. I'm the one that has to follow their rules and regulations for their show. And as long as they're consistent in how they do that, and as long as they're consistent in how they state that things can be issued refunds or not issued refunds, you know, I'm putting myself in their ball court. I can only hope that what I build is something that meets the standards that they've come to the expect because they're the event organizers, not me. I can't determine the show. And if I wanted to, I just host my own show, which I did. You can check it out last Thursday. In the flip side of things, I can't just go on the internet and bitch and moan because my car didn't get accepted because there's five different colors of white on my car and because I have real wheels, I still got denied. You can't do that because all you're doing is creating drama. All you're doing is creating complaints and, and bad news and bad PR about the event when really there's probably a few very specific outliers that have caused the issues itself. The issues are maybe some consistency stuff on the front end maybe some favoritism or lack of consistent judging to getting cars in, allowed some cars to sneak in that they probably shouldn't have let, and letting other cars get denied because they didn't know what to look for. But thirdly and most importantly, it's about having that like mutual understanding of respect. People that are applying their cars into a show are really giving themselves, they're opening themselves up to criticism. And we've talked about this in the past. You need to be okay if you get denied at the show. Does it hurt? Absolutely, it's it's going to hurt. It 100% will hurt. That doesn't mean that what Slam Enough is doing is inherently wrong. They just need to tell you what's going on and why they feel that way. And they need to be really honest with you and transparent about it because it's gonna help you understand as to why. Now you may still not agree with it, but at the end of the day, it's their show, not 
yours. And that's something that can be taken to both sides of the fence. Now, I have no idea if people at the front gate were mean, not mean, awesome, angry, hitting stuff, not hitting stuff, screaming, not screaming. Regardless on what it is, everybody that I talked to was incredibly sweet and incredibly nice. And I get that I'm like the wish app version where people might kind of understand where this 12 year old face is coming from, but the people that didn't know me were still incredibly nice. So I have a tough time believing it was as bad as what some people are putting out on the internet. I think what happens is just people get riled up when they get denied. There's some fighting or arguing and because neither side knows how to handle that, it just blows up. And that's where you can't do that, especially with Slam Enough getting so big. It's gonna be a huge show next year, undoubtedly going to cause issues eventually in time. And it's gonna be super important for that team to figure out how they manage parking, police officers, spectator lines, cars inside the show, and quality concerns in a way that is black and white and there is no essence of gray. And there's a lot of learning curve that comes with that. And that's why I'm always so patient with the Slam Enough team, because what they're still offering is still insane. You still get an incredible opportunity, incredible event, incredible location. You have Vaded hosting an incredible pre-meet that is absolutely astounding. And for 99% of the people that went, it was an awesome time. Don't let the 1% ruin it for everyone. And whether there's a catfish policy or not, you should understand what that means. But at the end of the day, it was still an incredible show. And I'm thankful that they're trying to have a catfish policy that makes sense, even though sometimes it may hurt feelings. And on the other side of the fence, ladies and gentlemen, baby boys and baby girls, if you are knowingly submitting cars that do have issues, that do have problems, and you get denied at the front gate, regardless on if you drive 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, you're kind of setting yourself up to fail. If you're driving a static car 10, 12 hours to brag about the fact that you drove it 10 to 12 hours and you crack your front lip or you crack your front bumper and then it gets denied and you get mad about that, Unfortunately, that's also your fault because you're driving it. You broke it before it actually got to the show. So take off the bumper if it matters that much to you. Take off the side skirts or splitter if it matters that much to you. But don't get mad at Slime Enough for trying to uphold the level of quality. You can hold them to the level of having consistent judging and consistent entry standards, but you can't be mad at them for sometimes telling you that you didn't just make the cut. And unfortunately, it's only gonna get harder. But let me know what you think about the old catfish policy below. And of course, thank you so much for watching. If you guys wanna check out my vlog coverage on Gatlinburg, it's a huge video, I'm super stoked. That'll get posted over on Thursday. I'm Alex, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button and we will see you later. Adios, goodbye. Hey!